Hi, thanks for watching Toronto TV. The program right now is called Live. So I'm the host, uh, Joseph Lau. Today we are lucky that we have a, a guest from North American Association of Asian Professionals. We call NAP, it's a long name. Uh, his name is Ben, Ben Hum. Hi, Ben. Hi, good evening. Hi, yeah, hi, Ben. Yeah. Uh, I know that you are the president of the NAP, right? It's a long name called. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the, the organization? Sure, I'll be happy to, Joseph. Um, NAP was actually started in New York City in 1982. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's grown to over 18 chapters across North America, mm -hmm. with two of them being in Canada. And um, in Canada, we have Toronto and Vancouver as the Canadian chapters. Uh, NAP Toronto uh, started approximately four years ago, in 2001. Okay. So for 2005, we're heading into our fifth year. Mm -hmm. So it's been a fast five years almost. Uh, <laughs> well, fast four years anyways. <laughs> Okay, but uh, what, what, uh, how many members right now for the NAP Toronto? Uh, for NAP Toronto, we have approximately uh, 200 members. Across the nation, uh, mm -hmm. US and Canada, we have approximately 4,000. Uh, yeah. Over 18 different cities. Okay. Um, just so you know, um, the North American Association of Asian Professionals is what we call it in Canada, but in the United States, it actually stands for the National Association of Asian American uh -huh. Professionals. Yeah. So. But so us being Canadians, we wanted our own unique identity, so it's okay. important to call us North American. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it confused me. How do we define like Asian American professional? That means like the both born in America that qualify it or how? Well, our membership is actually quite diverse in the fact that um, it's made up of uh, mostly of Asian professionals that are between 25 to 45 years of age. Okay. And uh, they encompass about 47 different industries. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a wide, diverse uh, group of members. Yeah. And um, we accommodate everyone. Um, okay. uh, everyone from Chinese to Korean to Southeast Asian, Indian, to Japanese. I mean, Asia, right? uh, mostly Southeast Asian. Southeast Asian. Okay. Yeah, but we're, we design our culture to be inclusive and not an exclusive group. So everybody's really welcome to join, okay. even if you're non Asian. But we'd like to um, make contacts or build some relations with mm -hmm. the Asian market. Okay, so the door is open. Yes, <laughs> and and uh, we're not exclusively to uh, Asians that are born here. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, most of the, our demographic is um, first, second generation, okay. uh, but we're open to anyone. Uh, and we collaborate with a lot of different groups as well. I see. Yeah. So I, I look at your website and, and you see you have like some chapters and also some ventures. What do you mean by ventures right there though? Uh, ventures are new chapters that haven't been um, around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So they start off as ventures until they build a minimal critical mass until um, we feel that such a time when they qualify to be a chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you say uh, the, the NAP in Toronto has been like for four years old right now. So uh, any, any significant like major events you have been hosting for the past four years? I would say that in the um, past four years that we've been around, we've been very busy. If you look at our website, we have close to uh, 30 events a year. Really? Um, yeah. They are over, I mean, all the, all the board of directors are, are volunteers. We're all volunteers, we're non profit, so this is a, <laughs> yeah, almost a part time yeah, job. A lot of work. <laughs> it, it is a lot of work. Yeah. But uh, we try to work with other Asian professional groups, which is very important for us. For us, we have very strong outreach to other groups. Um, I would say some of the large events that we have included the um, the NAP convention that we hosted in Toronto last mm -hmm. year yeah. at the um, at the Royal York Hotel, mm -hmm. and the significance of that event is it was held for the first time in Canada okay. since NAP started in New York 19, since 1982. Mm -hmm. So NAP Toronto was honored with uh, being the host of that event in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And it was a significant year because um, Toronto ha was facing a lot of challenges okay. um, in the adversity. Is that last year or this year? Mm -hmm. or the, it was 2003. 2003, last year, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Toronto was just in the grips of um, overcoming SARS. Uh -huh. yeah. And okay. it was uh, very yeah. difficult to overcome that. To bring timing, huh? Well, I mean, we did a pretty good job because uh, from our uh, uh, calculations, we pumped over a million dollars back into the economy for the city of Toronto okay. by bringing Americans back up to, to the city mm -hmm. and making them feel that Toronto is still a place to visit, to, visit. to work business. and to do business in. Yeah. yeah. And um, not to mention that over 80% of our sponsors were American companies. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the other significant event was we held this year in May 
to, in recognition of Asian Heritage Month. Okay. And it was the first pilot of something called the Asian Canadian Artist Awards. Okay. And, and this awards was to really recognize um, leading talent mm -hmm. in the Asian community from three different categories. Uh, Which three? We had uh, performing arts, okay. we had film and video, okay. and we had visual arts. Okay. We had close to 45 submissions for the first event, mm -hmm. and they were very, very good projects. Okay. And some of our sponsors included uh, organizations like uh, Citibank Group, uh, RBC, Dominion Security, uh -huh. and also CBC, which were very supportive of um, cultivating leadership in the Asian community for arts and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because this, in the, this industry tends to be a little bit marginalized, right? Like I people see. don't outreach, so I, I feel it's important mm -hmm. to use NAP as a neutral platform to outreach and to build bridges. Yeah. So just so people are aware that there are um, Asian leaders in that, um, in that field. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe so, yeah. That's, uh, that's quite meaningful about your projects, right? But they say that they are all volunteers, and how can you manage the, the time and the resources to do all those things by a group of like people still have to like working daytime to earn the money? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we ask the same question, but yeah. I would say that our team is really fueled by a passion mm -hmm. that we um, that drives this organization, okay. uh, the dedication, and also the fact that we feel that we're building something that is beneficial to, to the community uh -huh. um, to give representation, okay. to provide a voice, um, mm -hmm. to outreach to diversity uh, recruitment. Yeah. That's one of the projects that uh, we're very engaged in, okay. um, in working with organizations like the Toronto Police Force and Toronto Fire Services mm -hmm. to build awareness that there are career, opportu uh, that there are career opportunities in those areas, mm -hmm. in those non-traditional fields. Okay. Yeah. Good. But it's according to the name, like you say, you are classified as Asian American or Asian professionals. Will that name give any like barrier to outreach to mainstream or? Oh no, not at all. We we actually outreach to mainstream mm -hmm. um, non-Asians to okay. to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the workshops that we conduct, that we present, are presented by non-Asians as well. Okay. So we try to represent the diversity that we're striving to achieve. Mm -hmm. So non-Asians are most welcome. I see. Okay. So, and what about age? You say most of your members fall into like 25 to 45. Anything under or beyond is it? Oh, so yes. Welcome? Uh, yes, everybody's welcome. <laughs> it's just that the uh, range tends to be in that range. Okay. Um, we welcome students uh, who are new graduates who are just trying to get into the workforce. Okay. And they need to identify with uh, organization of peers. Mm -hmm. Then we'd like to be there for them. Okay. Uh, we have different programs that could help them, such as the launch of our of our mentorship program, mm -hmm. which is really designed to match accomplished business professionals with the younger generation mm -hmm. to help them gain some insight into different industries. Okay. So, would you say that uh, last year, uh, NAP Toronto hosts an uh, annual convention. What about this year? This year, the convention will be. Would you have any annual annual convention across America or? Yes, this uh, annual convention is actually circulated throughout North America. Okay. The year before that we hosted was in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, so then um, now Toronto was the host. Okay. And then this year was in San Francisco. Uh -huh. So next uh, next year, which is around the corner, uh -huh. it's going to be in the, sh uh, in the city of Chicago. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, that's good, yeah. Then you have every year you get a chance to like, meet different like people, members from different cities, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the uh, uniqueness of, of, of NAP, yeah. uh, much that um, the city does not revolve around Toronto, yeah. like as much as we like to think it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, we like to act as a vehicle because your membership is recognized throughout all the chapters in North America. Okay, so as long as you travel, if you travel a lot, then you can join the activities in different cities. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So and then uh, one thing, how much is the membership? <laughs> membership fee. The <laughs> membership fee is uh, is a measly seventy five dollars a year. Okay, seventy five Canadian. That's in Canadian dollars. That's, that's right. Okay. And then do, do they, what do they get? They get newsletters on? Yep, they get newsletters, they get exclusive access to events, they also get free access to some of our events. Okay. They get a membership that is recognized throughout North America. Yeah. So 
So that membership will carry with you mm -hmm. if you even move to another city in North America that has a NAP chapter. Okay. So for example, even if you visit Vancouver, yeah. and they tend, they might have an event on the time that you're staying there, yeah. uh, you're more than welcome to okay. join them. Yeah. Like in fact, a lot of um, people that are traveling, coming to Toronto to stay, mm -hmm. their memberships transfer to Toronto as well. I see. Yeah. So you, you have, um, you, you receive discounts on different events. You get free access to events, you get exclusive access to a lot of other events that we have throughout mm -hmm. the year. Yeah. Uh, for that, I think that's a lot of potential huh, for your organization. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can be as busy as you like it to be, mm -hmm. or you can be as relaxed as you want it to be. Yeah. I think that the good point is like you can draw on those resources. At least you talk about like 4,000, you know, uh, professional people in, the, in, in different industry. Right? Sometimes like you can help students get them I in mean, in certain job area or even like you can do a business ventures, right? So. That's correct. I mean, um, it's really funny that sometimes we're a victim of our own success in that we, we, we've had some of our board members who became successful with a side business that they've always wanted to do. And, and, and we encourage that, right? We yeah. encourage success. Mm -hmm. And um, now that they're so busy with their other business, they have little time for naps. Yeah. <laughs> but we best, uh, we wish them the best of success. Good, good, yeah. Okay, then uh, probably you look at your website and then maybe they can explain more to us, right? Okay, sure. Yeah. So come visit our website. Yeah. Um, the website address is www.naptoronto.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a member area that's okay. uh, being built up right now. Mm -hmm. And this is actually part of a national back office that all our members and non-members can visit. Uh -huh. Here you actually have a summary of the different events that, that is going on right now. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, we have a Christmas gala that's just around the corner yeah. on December 11th. Mo Wen, what's, what's Mo Wen? Mo Wen, that's actually a Chinese word. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you translate it, maybe I can ask you what you think it means. Mo Wen is it Mandarin or Cantonese? <laughs> I think it's. I think it might be. Maybe Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one that like uh, you end up trying to join with the Taiwan Young Entrepreneurs that's, Association? Yeah. That's yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mo Wen, from um, what I know of, it means dreamy state. Uh, uh huh. Mo one or something Mo like one. that. Mo one, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> this is the English pronunciation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, here you can actually have a, a recap of all the events that we had throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And over here in this corner, you actually see na national news. Yeah. So what's going on on a national level. Okay. Okay, so this is all over North America. Yeah. So over here you actually see the NAP national, uh, the NAP national annual ski trip that uh, hosted by NAP Vancouver. Okay. So that takes place at Whistler. Yeah. And we have chapter news. Mm -hmm. And if you go over here. Is this, is this the general site for the NAP, I mean, uh, uh, NAP America, or is this for Toronto? This is. Oh, it, just, oh, just for Toronto. Yeah, this, this Toronto. is a dedicated site just for, uh, Toronto. Just for Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Um, so if you go to here, which is a, a, a link yeah. to all the chapters. Okay. This is a contact information for all the chapters across North America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can go back home. Yeah. So how do you position NAP? NAP? Is it a, like a non-profit organization or is it a business organization or kind of a... Well, it's, it's actually set up as a non-profit organization that is uh, volunteer-based. Volunteer-based, okay. Yeah, so all the membership fees, uh, all the revenue that we mm -hmm. generate from sponsors yeah. goes, goes back to, to our members in the form of um, quality events. And if you want to go, you can actually go to NAP, to NAP National. Okay. You can link to NAP National, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And over here, you can actually see all the different chapters that are, that are li listed here, too. So you can visit their website. Mm -hmm. So if you're planning a trip to another city in North America, okay. you can actually just visit their site as well, and you can get a listing of their events. Yeah. But according to NAP Toronto website, I say you've got some committees. What kind of committees do you have there? So uh, we have a number of committees that are yeah. listed over here. Mm -hmm. So we have finance, finance. PR, membership, um, marketing, mentorship, events, okay. and uh, communication. Yeah, one thing I'm interested what say, what's mentorship the committee do? Well, that's a new program that's being started. And what the mentorship mm -hmm. team does yeah. is it basically build a process that matches a conference of business professionals mm -hmm. with a... Um, with a mentee, mentee okay. yeah, with, with a mentee, yeah. with an apprentice, whatever you want to call it, yeah. 
And, and what we do try to do is really to build a good pool of mentors. Mm -hmm. So it gives the mentee access to a wide variety of exposure or choices to different types of industries. Okay. So at the present moment, we, we have a call to build our mentorship uh, database uh -huh. of for, from interested candidates who would like to volunteer mm -hmm. their expertise and their time to give something back to the younger generation. Okay. So, and also we're looking to interested young generation people to apply to be a mentee as well. Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, it's, it's quite, mean, quite meaningful, right? And also some new idea, right? We, we look at many different business associations. We just talk about networking, you know, making friends. But, but here, I mean, I see some kind of concrete idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we try to um, get ideas and yeah. put it into reality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's actually lots of fun because we've had a chance to meet so many different people in the industry. Yeah. Are, are you the founding member of the Map Toronto? Or? Yes, I'm one of the founding, founding. Uh, also team founding, members. Also yes. founding president, is that right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Good. That's why you, I see that you spend a lot of your time, you know, the first time you're working on it. Yeah. yeah. Any, any planning for the next year, any like 2005? Any for, for the Map Toronto? Any um, for the UN? Yes, Map Toronto, we, we have lots of events being planned for 2005. Mm -hmm. One of them is actually a workshop that's based on bringing authors that have written about the challenges of being a visible minority growing up in North America. Uh -huh. uh, one of the authors that we've been in touch with has published a book called American X. Okay. And it's a compilation of short stories from high school students to working professionals. Mm -hmm. And they've written about their challenge as being Chinese or being as Korean growing up in North America. And what are the challenges they faced of being a visible minority? Yeah. Like whether they, those be challenges be of a personal, change, uh, personal nature mm -hmm. or a professional nature. Yeah. So well, these are things that we deal with every day, just as people living in a North American society okay. or a Western society. Yeah. And it's just interesting to, when we come around and talk about these issues, mm -hmm. because we all could relate to it. It doesn't matter if we're in Canada or in the United States. That's true, yeah. It doesn't matter if you immigrated here or not. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've, I've found most gratifying in the past has been uh, this year we, we worked with um, many different organizations like with the National Film Board. Mm -hmm. And we presented films that talked about the Chinese heritage in Canada okay. that many of us don't know about. Uh -huh. About how the sacrifices they, they, they made in, in building the infrastructure, the, yeah. the, the, the first businesses they established in Canada. Uh -huh. And, and, and it's, it's those sacrifices, it's why we have the opportunities we have mm -hmm. uh, now. Okay. So it's important for, for us to build that awareness, uh -huh. to educate people. I see. And it's funny that these films are even produced by non-Asians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so they know about our history more than yeah. we do. <laughs> Probably they, they, they have more spare time to, to work on it instead of like we're, we're just working hard for money. So. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I guess we all have our priorities. <laughs> but one thing, you know, in, living in America, like we, we see that as a multicultural uh, like countries. So that, I mean, do you find that like Asian, Asian, Asian Americans, they have a lot more barriers than the mainstream? Or do they get involved with the, the mainstream already? So? Um, the challenges come in different ways. There's mm -hmm. there's different challenges in terms of depending on the neighborhood you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in Canada, United States, you yeah. have different types of challenges. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a neighborhood, like I said, or the workplace. Mm -hmm. American companies tend to put more resources and expertise in diversity uh, recruitment programs. Okay. Where, whereas in Canada, they're still just learning about that. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit uh, behind. But Canada tends to be a much more tolerant type society yeah. than, than America. Okay. So it's very much... A give and take. Yeah. Yeah. But one thing they say that I mean, in terms of like the living standard, they are the same. But in terms of like the like job opportunities, you know, respect or the status, still they are it's the same as the mainstream right now, or they're still a little bit like I mean, uh, behind. <laughs> um, like I said, I would say that um, each country has its Different pros and cons. Yeah. Like the good points and the bad points. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say one's better than the other. Okay. Because uh, in the end, it, we, we all come out the same. Mm -hmm. Because when I interact with my uh, NAP brothers and sisters in the United States, mm -hmm. 
we all have the same goals, the same aspirations. Okay. And it's amazing when you meet another Asian person that lives out on the West Coast in Los Angeles or something. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the same thing, yeah. you know, because in, in the end, we all have a very common heritage that binds us together, whether we are whether we're aware of it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We are talking about like global village, you know, global people. So, yes. so no matter you, where you live, it's still the, the same, right? So Absolutely. You know, it's, it's yeah. more than just words. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually reality that we all live. Okay. All right. It's, it's, it's nice talking to you, Ben. It was yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, so I think in the, in the long run, you have any new events, and then and then we would like to like cooperate with your organization. Maybe yeah, do I mean do something that mutual benefit right there. So absolutely, anything that helps community or to inspire um, our mission, which is to cultivate leadership, mm -hmm. foster professional development, yeah. and build workforce diversity awareness. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes toward those things, we're all over it. Okay, it's nice to hear that. Okay, so, so um, thank you for watching the live program in Toronto TV. So now next time we have a, a new, I mean another guest to talk about some interesting organization and the topics. Okay, thank you, goodbye, thanks man. Bye bye.